Hi there folks and welcome back to the Tower Tech. We're back at the whiteboard with the first of a brand new series of videos all about advanced overclocking. You guys made it really clear in the comments of some of the previous overclocking videos that I did that you were really keen to learn about some of the more advanced features and this is the first of them looking at something called load line calibration. <laughs> Load line calibration is effectively the thing that compensates for a droop in voltage when a CPU is put under load. It's a normal behavior of a CPU and at stock speeds and stock specifications, it actually makes sure that the amount of power that is drawn by the CPU stays within the specified amount. It also makes sure that you protect the CPU from damage and that you maximize the longevity of that piece of equipment. For overclockers, we want to compensate for that a little bit. As you step on in frequency, drop in voltages lead to instability, but this is a setting that should be used conservatively and carefully, especially if you're new to it. In order to explain how to use load line calibration, I need to sketch out a graph of what happens to the voltages and currents in a CPU when it's under load. So the profile I've just sketched out there is what happens to the current. This leading edge here, that's what happens when the CPU actually goes under load. So as the transistor starts to switch more frequently, and invariably the frequency of the CPU steps up, it draws more current from the MOSFETs and the VRMs within your motherboard. What actually then happens in parallel to that is a corresponding drop in voltage. As I explained before, this is to make sure that the power drawer of the CPU uh, remains within the rated specifications, but it also makes sure that you don't exceed the, uh, the maximum stated voltage uh, delivered from the main board to the CPU. Now, the reason for that is it isn't a nice uh, a nice neat line uh, in terms of power delivery like I've drawn on the board there. It's actually something that wobbles around. It's very difficult to measure these, ne near on impossible to measure these through software in fact, but if you had an oscilloscope and you were actually looking at the voltage uh, during a transitional cycle from uh, idle to load and vice versa, what you would actually see on the voltage is something that looks a little bit more like this. So there's a natural ripple that appears within the voltage. And actually, as you transition from, uh, from idle to load, that first transition there, you actually have an undershoot or an overshoot, depending on your perspective, of the voltage relative to where you actually want that voltage to end. The reason for that is that VRMs switch a particular frequency, that's nowhere near the same kind of speed that a processor uh, uh, is changing states in, so it's effectively playing catch up. In order to maintain the right amount of power delivery, it overshoots effectively, whether that be uh, dropping the voltage to compensate for greater current draw, or vice versa, once it returns to an idle state, returning that voltage back to where it was. The risk of uh, having too much voltage within your CPU uh, or deliver to your CPU from your main board is that whilst you may look at that voltage uh, both under idle and under load, what you don't actually see is when the, you're transitioning from a, from a load state to an idle state, that overshoot there may well indeed, just for a fraction of a second, overshoot the stated specification for uh, VID, which is voltage identification, actually going into your CPU. Now, what's important to understand is that VID is not an actual voltage. This is, uh, this is a voltage identification that comes from the CPU to the main board saying, please deliver this to me. The reality is that that 
is only true under a zero amp draw. Whenever your PC is powered up, you will always have some kind uh, of current draw on the CPU. So you never actually achieve that particular level. So setting the vid to high uh, can damage your CPU. And ultimately the overshoot here typically will only be the point at which the voltage actually hits the rated vid. Most main boards, to be fair, do a pretty good job at compensating for that overshoot. They do that by having a great capacitors within them, particularly when you're switching from an idle to a load position. There's energy that's stored up within those capacitors that can compensate uh, for the sudden draw on them and having really high quality VRMs that have much higher rated switching frequencies means that it can compensate for that overshoot. The higher the switching frequency of the VRM, the less acute that overshoot should be. If you're overclocking, the likelihood is you've bought yourself a decent board to begin with. So we can simplify that view down to a, uh, a much more linear relationship between voltage and current. So that's a simplified view of what's actually happening. Under idle conditions, your voltage will be higher, but the current will be lower. As you go under load, the current draw goes up, but the voltage starts to droop. What load line calibration allows you to do is it allows you to compensate for that V-droop in order to be able to deliver more stable overclocks to your CPU. Different motherboards vary in the way in which they describe this. And before you start playing around with that setting, it's highly recommended that you go and check your manual for your motherboard or on the vendor website so that you understand the behavior that you're gonna get from different settings under load line calibration. As you step up in the, uh, in the compensation for load line calibration, the sorts of behavior that you start to see is something that looks a bit like this. It compensates for that V-droop. It pulls more power at the point at which your CPU goes under load. And that's gonna allow you to get a better 24 by seven stable overclock into your system without having to put crazy voltages into the CPU under idle conditions. Now, a word of warning, there are some extreme load line calibration settings that are typically targeted at LN2 users. Unless you're doing liquid nitrogen, stay well clear of them because what they actually do is start to deliver more voltage with more current under low conditions. And what you actually get is a profile that looks like this. That's a killer of CPUs. Make sure you steer well clear unless you really understand what you're doing. Something in the moderate setting range is normally where you want to find yourself. But as I say, different motherboard manufacturers describe these in slightly different ways. And it's highly recommended that you check in before you start tweaking with the setting. Most modern boards, it's gonna be a relatively safe thing for you to do. And it should help you eke out that extra one or 200 megahertz in your overclock. So there we go guys, a quick overview of load line calibration. I hope that video was useful. Please like and share it. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are and I'll see you in my next one.